on the Build Show today. Five flavors of Pex Piping. With master plumber, Eric Ani. let's get going. All right, guys, I got Eric Ani in town. Eric, I've been working out. I'm feeling a little stronger than normal. <laughs> Settle down, Matt. <laughs> All right, so Eric, we see a pex fitting right here. Yep. And there's more than one option for pex fittings. There's actually five flavors, right? Yeah, you know, we see a lot of them out in the, out in the industry. This one in particular is made, this is a brass fitting, female mm -hmm. adapter, but it's got a uh, stainless steel press, like collar ring on the end of it. Gotcha. So how about this? How about we go back to the studio, Eric? We'll actually roll out all five of the fitting options. We'll show these guys the tools and let's talk about the options out there. I think this is gonna be a terrific video. If you're building a custom home, if you're a builder, or even if you're a young plumber, five flavors of Plex. I'll meet you back in the studio. Okay, y'all, back in the studio, I've got master plumber Eric Ani with me. And on this video, we're gonna run down all five connection options on Pex. I'm really intending this as a builder advice video. If you're building a house, here's the different options. And I'm gonna try and get Eric to give us a little uh, kind of pros and cons on each one of these systems. So that being said, let's start at the first of the five connection options. Where do we start, Eric? Well, it's just kind of the agnostic, uh, known as a major brand in the industry, but we're gonna <laughs> call it push to connect, right? Push to connect. That's technically what it is. It's oftentimes called a shark bite. Yeah, they're, they were the first brand that came out with this type of connection, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. And now all the major, major manufacturers offer it. It's pretty cool stuff, to be yeah. completely honest with you. Uvenor has it as well. They, they came do. They out with this not too long ago. Yeah, there's brand new. a couple new. other brands. Yep. But the whole idea here is there's no tool necessary, right? Very little tools, okay? So there are a couple things that you do need for a push to connect fitting. Uh, all the manufacturers are going to say you need some type of gauge to mark your tubing to show... Uh, an insertion depth thing. So I know we had a marker around here. Uh, here I got a Sharpie in my, there you uh, go. check this out. Cool Sharpie. There you go, brother. Oops, wrong side. I like, I like to say, man, you fancy. <laughs> okay, so I do need to mark the insertion depth onto the tubing. Okay. And then, oh, cap. Very appropriate yeah. fitting for yeah. me to have on my- That's what I thought. My van there. So now it hits that line. I've pushed it all the way in that that fitting and the seal is being made by a rubber O-ring. And some, it. the, it's holding onto the pipe with a stainless steel kind of grip ring. So when this system came out, how long has it been now? 15 years ago, maybe? At least, maybe even longer. I always thought of it as a kind of transition because if you look at the bag, not this one, but some of these bags will say, uh, works with PEX, copper, CPVC, and PERT, which kind of looks like PEX pipe, but it's slightly yep. different. So in other words, this one fitting can work with all kinds of different pipes. And so I thought of it as like an emergency or, a, you know, I got to cap something. Yep. But today we're seeing builders, especially new construction, new construction plumbers, even using PTC in the whole house, right? They are. It's common all over the world, too. So not as much in North America. We're starting to see more of it. Look, the fittings are a little bit more expensive than these other fittings. Yeah. They are so because it lowers the barrier of entry, right? Mm -hmm. You don't need any real elaborate special training yep. in order to uh, assemble it. And you don't need an expensive tool like right. you're going to see with some of the other ones. Right, exactly. And so it's, it's pretty simple, yeah. right? The other thing is, um, look, it hasn't been really accepted by all the professionals in the industry. Right. You know, skepticism. These fittings carry all the same ratings as the rest of them on the table. Yeah. Pressure, temperature, working, operating pressures, things like that. They are, by all accounts, it may, maybe you can see the hesitation. I don't love to admit it, but they, they meet all the same standards. Yeah. Right? It's just a little bit easier. It's a great product DIY. I don't know personally if I would use this to plumb an entire house, and here's why. Expensive. Yeah. Like the fittings themselves. Yeah. I do already own tools that allow me to use other sure. fitting systems that are lower cost okay. and just as reliable. All right. So uh, the bottom line on this is two things I'd, I'd say. Uh, we often call these shark bite fittings. That's kind of the Kleenex brand. They were the first to market. It is interesting that they have been innovating too, though. They have this shark bike max out yeah. now that I saw uh, when I was buying fittings. And uh, I'll leave that for another video. But uh, they've innovated a lot. I think in general, PTCs come a long ways, but it's definitely not 
uh, a common occurrence in new construction. You know, you brought up, uh, I, want, I do want to backtrack a little bit. You brought up a, early on with this discussion here, the transition between different materials. Oh yeah, uh-huh. That's actually how I use them uh, without shame. If I, we see a lot of uh, CPVC from the er, late 90s, early 2000s, mm -hmm. new construction in the Twin Cities area. And I, it's not my favorite material to work with, and I'm not stocking that, that material on, in my shop or on my van. So transitioning over to something like PEX or even copper, depending yeah. on what we're doing, to CPVC, push to connect is fantastic for that. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay, next up we've got... Uh, expansion PEX, or what we a lot of professionals are gonna call PEX A. PEX A, yep. uh, There's some brand names out in the industry that a lot of people are familiar with, Upinor, uh, formerly Wurzbo. Yep. Okay. Okay. So PEX A, I've used uh, PEX A a lot over the years. A little more flexible, uh, a little bit easier to bend than, let's say, PEX B or PEX C. This is PEX B, still pretty bendable. It's not like you can't bend it, right? Right. Yep. But, it's a PEX, uh, it's a plastic product. So it, I mean, it's PEX. It's polyethylene cross-linked. It's you know flexible, more flexible. More it's flexible. just how the it's the it's the ingredients that go into the. The batch of cookies, right? right. You know, it's how sure. they make the, the tubing itself. Okay, so how does the fitting work on these expansions? Well, the fitting's really neat. So the, a lot of people like uh, PEX A system because the fitting itself, the ID, is the same size as the ID of the tubing. Uh, so meaning the inside diameter ID Correct. Uh, is going to be the exact same here. Whereas some of the other systems, yes. the fittings are smaller. Can you show us a little side by side comparison? Yeah, that? so Let's see if we can zoom in and show that. Yep. So really, what we're talking about with PEX A is the 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 fitting size, physical size of the fitting is larger. Mm -hmm. So we have to stretch the tubing to fit on the outside of the fitting. So in other words, this is a half inch and this is a half inch, but you can't insert that dry without doing Correct. expansion. Right, and so this yeah. is a this is also called half inch, but this is an insert fitting. We're going to talk about these in a second, but I can install that. Got it. Without stretching the tubing. Got it. Interesting. So what makes PEX A or expansion PEX um, a little bit different is that whole scenario where the two the fitting is larger than the its its competition, which in theory allows a better flow path. I makes mean, sense. yeah, I, I think they can prove that in a laboratory, but there's not a lot out on the job site that's really noticeable to be yeah. completely honest yeah that makes sense with this system though we have to have we have additional parts okay so with the push to connect we just slam it on we go mm -hmm. with the expansion you've got these rings that are made out of the same type of material okay. as the tubing itself or so, similar material so on this package they're calling an expansion sleeve is yep. that a common name yeah i probably just called it a ring i think that's just kind of automatic it's gotcha. probably what's stuck in my head okay so you you slide that on the outside there's a stop on the end of this little Okay, sleeve. so we can't okay. go too far, in other words. It's stopping at that end. Yeah, point. I can't slide it down to my hand. It yeah. stops directly on the end of the cut tubing. Got okay, it. I can't put any further. Now, uh, again, we have already talked about it. I can't slide this onto this thing. It just simply doesn't fit. Yeah. Okay, so what we need to do is we have a special tool now. Uh, we used to do this manually. <laughs> that was a long time ago to be, I'm maybe dating myself. <laughs> but now we've got power tools. These have been around for a long time too. So this is a Milwaukee, uh, PEX expander. Okay. So it's got uh, different size heads on the end of this cone head here that uh, are specific to the size of the tubing we're working with. But this is half inch. Okay. And so I'm going to insert the end of this and press this button in a, a series of expansions. This is going to enlarge the ID of the tubing. So in other words, you're, sh you're sliding that in and we're, we're uh, expanding that ID of the tubing. So yep. go ahead and give it a try. Yeah, real quick, I'll do that. It's gonna, it's, I have a few seconds to work with it. I can insert it onto the fitting and then the tubing starts to contract automatically uh, on its own. Okay, so in other words, once you do that, you're gonna quickly drop that fitting in. You gotta have the fitting around. Don't, don't expand, go to your truck and grab it. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise, you just have to re-expand. <laughs> yeah. There, let me give you a, uh, let's put a uh, T on there uh, as our fitting, as if we were doing a transition here, half inch. Okay, let's put that fitting on. Okay. There's a number of expansions you're supposed to do, so you kind of count that in your head. And then there's enough time 
to I, you know i didn't have to hurry right and i do have to kind of hold this here for a second if this were up in the air maybe hanging vertical i'd have to make sure that i hold this long enough so now already it's getting tighter now we're good it's not fully sealed there's a, a specific amount of time that you have to uh wait before you can pressurize this Got it. that's maybe one of the downfalls uh not or much, though not much. However, I live in a cold climate, right? So uh -huh. in the wintertime when we're doing new construction if or it's repairs. it's 10 degrees in that house. <laughs> yeah, so we might actually have to go get a heat gun to heat this up. Oh, interesting. If it is really cold, this isn't an awesome system to work with without the addition of adding heat, heat. maybe waiting a little longer uh, before that. we pressure. I don't have that problem in Texas, Eric. <laughs> you don't. Well, it's not a huge issue. And yeah. like I said, with the heat gun, we can combat that. But it's, you know, time is money. So there's two things I think are interesting on here that that uh, the non plumber will maybe not notice without pointing to it. Check this out. There's these little nubs on the side, and you'll notice when Eric put that fitting on, it stopped at those nubs. The other thing I'm seeing is it kind of looks like, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong, is there like a little barb on that fitting, almost like kind of like an arrowhead on there? Yeah. Am so I there are. That? Yeah, you are. And actually, there's more than one. There, there's some smaller ones too. Uh, which matter because in the engineering of the system and the testing and the verification that this process holds and performs as needed, there's actually multiple barbs on there. So there's multiple ceiling points. That's cool. Okay, so that's expansion. I like yep. that. I've used uh, expansion a lot. It's very popular. Uh, we see it in potable systems. We see it in heating systems. We see it in all types of piping. And we can get it in, like, now, actually, uh, Upinor. Uh, is making PEX A up to three inch diameter. So for like commercial applications. Yeah, pretty, so that was half impressive. inch, but obviously they make it in different sizes. This look like this looks like a one inch. Yep. Uh, which is pretty common on on feed lines on my houses, uh, and three quarter half. Uh, and if I, well, this is probably a whole other video, but I think that a few of these manufacturers make three eighths as well. Not nearly as. They common. do. Not very common in North America, but it could be used for sure. Okay, so PTC expansion. What's next? Uh, probably a little lesser known system, but something I've used for about 25 years, believe it or not, it's PEX Press. Press. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, the brand or manufacturer that I use is Vega. Okay. Okay. You probably, you're familiar with Vega's products with their metals, the Pro Press. Yep. They invented, yep. right? Yep. Our press copper fittings. Mm -hmm. Um, so press PEX, uh, not at all the same as the expansion fitting system totally different interesting so now we can use we could use the same type of tubing all the tubing diameters are the same maybe mm -hmm. they're not the same you know material makeup yep. as far as the ingredients but now instead of having to expand the pecs expansion mm -hmm. we could just insert the fitting right on the end and the, these fittings actually come with these nice stainless steel rings already installed on them this is vega system yep and now we use a tool, uh, a couple different types of tools. So you've got this manually expanding tool. Like I've had this thing for like 25 it years. It looks old. It's, it is. Still it working is. great. It is. Yeah, it is working great. And this goes on that. Uh, we clamp it down. Here, and you've got it. A, you clamp it. Okay. I want to see So this is works. half inch. Uh, real quick. One, one thing that I kind of like is they color code the sizes. Oh, so the yellow is indicating half inch and blue must be three quarter then? Yeah, it just makes That's it That's kind of handy. And then the, my tool, my half inch tool is yellow and my three quarter tool is blue. Oh, so <laughs> this is actually corresponding to that. This is an actually a Yeah, Vega it's just tool. a quick indicator. That's nice. It's nice. I like that. Uh, so this is simple. So I can just push this on here like that. Okay, and, and uh, just so the camera can see, you're noticing he's putting this right up against that yellow collar. Is that correct? Yeah, so it's, it's covering this entire stainless steel ring here inside of the jaws of the tool mm -hmm. and it's really simple you just have to squeeze it. it doesn't take a ton of force and now what we've done is a permanent connection uh, with the fitting inside the tubing we didn't have to expand it so now you, that's, yeah you couldn't you're not going to pull that out uh, I don't think it's even possible that's I've crazy. seen pressure tests and uh, you know different type of dynamic tests where it's incredible the permanence basically of a fitting system like this so uh, this fitting from, is it Vega or Viega? That, it's Vega. This Vega. is Vega's fitting. There's a lot of different manufacturers. We actually have some like here. This is a more generic, well, maybe not generic. It's Apollo brand, but this is the same thing. These are separate sleeves, correct? Yeah, exactly. I was just going to point that out. So you can buy the fittings, right? Mm -hmm. So same type of fitting, more or less. Uh, it inserts into the tubing, but then you would have to, you would have to first 
push the the this like thimble ring on the end of it okay and it's got a stop on there too if you can see that guy it so does and stopping at the end of the pipe it does it's probably even hard to see with the camera but there's this tiny little hole in the end of it see that yeah what's the hole for it's a visual indicator so i can see that the tubing i can see the tubing through that hole and, and so that i know sure it's that. made it all the way on got it uh the reason that's important is if you're cutting the tubing and you uh maybe you kind of uh, oval the tube and maybe put mm. it out around. Uh, it might not be easy to th put this on there. Maybe you're in a precarious position. That visual indicator is, tells me, the installer, or anybody that I've got that on there all the way, which is important. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you ins insert the fitting. Okay. okay. And we do the same process as we did before. So We're going to use this over here. We don't want to use it now. Oh, yeah. That's true. <laughs> no, we got more. We got more. Okay. Go ahead okay. So, yeah, yeah same thing. Uh, manual press with this. I do have to kind of line it up. this time you don't have a ring, so you yeah. got you gotta, have to kind of line it up a little bit, a little more to it. Yeah, there's a little more to it. That's interesting. That's kind of a that is kind of a manufacturer's benefit to these Vegas. I suspect that this individual system is probably less expensive than this, though, isn't it? It would be, but if you consider having to buy, uh, maybe you're buying in a larger bulk pack. A right, hundred pack, right? Yeah, or even a thousand, right? Big right. bag of these. Now you have to store these separate from the fittings that they're going to fit on, right? Mm -hmm. So now you've got these cases that have multiple bins, multiple, you know, more inventory. Time is money. It is. Yeah. It is. You know, I love the fact that uh, with this system, not to really pump up Vega too much here, but it's nice because I grabbed the fitting, the ring's already on it. Yeah, and in even your least cost plumber is going to be 100 bucks an hour, and, and for a master plumber, you're going to spend a couple hundred bucks an hour. So do you really want them fumbling around and getting all kinds of fittings? This, in the end, could be pretty valuable time-wise. Yeah, look, this fitting doesn't do me any good without the, the ring, right? Mm -hmm. And vice versa. So yeah. I can have all the rings in the world if I don't have the fitting I need. Yeah. I'm not doing any good. So press. inventory, press. Uh, real quick before we go, so you saw me do two of them with the manual tool mm -hmm. it's been around forever i don't even really use this anymore i yeah. keep it on my van it's nice to have with two hands you got to have a little bit more <laughs> well, you almost need a third hand with that thing right i mean maybe yeah especially when you get to the three quarter and the one inch it right. gets a lot harder right to press it it does so i actually brought today with me just for to show you i don't have the press tool with me but you've seen me press copper mm -hmm. you know this is a jaw that just goes in my copper press tool. Got it. So okay. it's, it's a tool that's similar to this, different head on right, there. Right, yeah. The Power jaws tool. go on there, yep. and it's got that hydraulic uh, super action to yeah. clamp that down. Yeah, and, and so, then you can do it one-handed, too. Yeah, so I can do it one-handed. I'm pulling a trigger instead of manually operating yep. uh, a kind of press that's tool speed like you that. Up too. It is, it's, you know what? It's about uh, just wear and tear on your body. Yeah. This is sure. easier. Yeah, Let yeah. the tool do the work. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then it also makes my press tool more versatile. So that's, we've got PTC expansion press. Now, honestly, we're going to talk finally and fourth, we've got the most popular fitting system in the country, yeah, in man, North I've, America. I've been using this. Oh, I don't always use this system now, but for years, that's all I used starting in about the year 2000. Yeah. So I've been almost 25 years with uh, mostly PEX in my houses. Right. So PEX hits a scene, uh, kind of new construction in North America, late 90s, early 2000s. It took a lot of uh, companies to really jump on board, yeah. right? But like you said... As a side note, though, PEX is not a new technology. No, uh, no. I looked it up, and I actually made some old videos about this. PEX came to America in 1972. It the did. The year of my birth. So, yeah. uh, you know, PEX is the same age as I am. It's 50 years plus in America. It is. It is. I, I, I guess what I meant by that, it just really wasn't... We weren't seeing we weren't it as see, a... Correct. That's a, right. An installed product, new yes. construction. That's right replacing copper it took that long for yes. for uh companies and there yeah. are some things that went into that whole process but yep. so this is this is what we call crimp okay okay so this is a copper ring it doesn't really look like copper it's made out of copper it looks like black though yeah it is it, but it, it's i think it's an alloy technically okay. but it is made out uh made out of copper hmm. Mostly, and this is going to go on the outside of the tubing. Okay, okay, so similar to what we had on this guy with the crimp sleeve. Yeah, but see, we don't have but a But now stock. it's a loose ring. It is. Oh, that's interesting. It is. So I personally don't have a ton of experience with this system. Uh, when I started out in our area and we started using PEX, I was still early on in my career at that time. But when we started seeing PEX and installing it for new construction, 
in the Twin Cities market, we really had like two main players, and that was at the time Wurzbo, mm-hmm. right? The, now Upinor. Now Upinor, and then at that time, still coming into the market was this German company that had bought a uh, a uh, manufacturer in the United States so they could get into our market, and they were called Vega. Got it. Okay, so Which are two dominant players today. They are, yeah, and they're you know world class, and and so are a lot of other manufacturers yeah. though. So like this system is most commonly used with fittings that are made by two different companies in our industry, um, or I guess plumbers would r- recognize the two main companies. That what make are those fitting. brands? Watts. Okay. Uh, Old and name Nib- in plumbing. Yep. Uh, Nib. Or I guess there's three. Nibco. Mm-hmm. and Zern. Yeah, all those names have been yeah. around a long time. They have been. They have been. They make, uh, you know, everything for everything rela- plumbing related. Uh, so these copper rings, like we said, they slip onto the outside of the tubing. You then insert the fitting again. So now we're not expanding anything. Okay, so just to, just to uh, uh, for my own knowledge, there is still a, there is still a nipple on there that, that prevents this from overdriving. And, yep. and that tells you physically to stop but the ring doesn't have that. So how do you know where the ring goes now? So the ring, you, you, there is about an eighth of an inch or so uh, of tubing on the fitting side uh-huh. of the ring. Okay. And that, that's just a visual, okay? So you have to visualize that and understand gotcha. that. Uh, there is training of, involved with this. Like they, you know, the, each of the fitting manufacturers will give you a manual show sure. what need, is needed. But then there's a manual tool, okay? Uh, there are power tools available. Like I said, I don't even have one, but you've got some different tools here. Yep. Here's a manual press or crimp tool okay. that does half inch and three quarter. All in the same tool. All in the same tool. So you got to hold I'm that. I'm surprised it's actually my tool. So this is, <laughs> so so this is actually why I don't love this system personally. But it is, like I said, number one in the entire world or entire North America. Here'd be my concern though. You're working overhead. Yeah. And, oh shoot. Or I'm in a tight space under a cabinet or a vanity or yeah. in a wall. Maybe yeah. I'm making a repair. And it does get cumbersome to get this positioned on there just right. Yeah. And then I have to kind of look at it there. Around. It does move around. See, I'm yeah. not any good at this. I'm not going to yeah. lie to you. That's all right. Oh, oh man. I'm, I'm probably not helping as your plumber apprentice. Uh, well, I told you, I'm kind of, I'm not very good at this. And then there's a was, lot more I force. I actually was his apprentice for a day, by the way. <laughs> okay. So we've made the joint. Now, see, I'm not super enthusiastic about the fact that there's not a lot of tubing right there, uh, but I'm guessing that this is going to hold. It's probably going to be watertight. But it you would have liked to have seen a little bit more tubing there. A little, just a, you know, about an eighth of an inch or so. Yeah. Um, it ain't coming off though, is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, the old adage, you, know, you can shake it a few times and say, that ain't going nowhere. But So in your opinion, why is this the most popular system in America? And I, I'm guessing I, think I it know w- the answer. I think it's just inexpensive. Yeah, it's cost. Yeah, right? it is. Uh, uh, it's is a, it's the, proven reliable. There's mm-hmm. no doubt about that. Yeah. Uh, and so cost drives a lot of sure. innovation and, yeah. you know, but speed of the other ones maybe is kind of the... The, uh, the, what yeah, makes it. And maybe slightly more, reli- not reliable per se, but slightly less prone to human error. Human error that? is a huge thing. So I've made some, uh, reluctantly, I, I'll admit this, I've made some mistakes on installs when I did sure. new construction years ago. Everyone has. Uh, where I didn't press one side of a fitting. Oh. Maybe. And, it, and believe it or not, I've seen situations where you can put this stuff together and under the, just the most perfect circumstances you can even do like a uh pressure test and maybe, it wouldn't blow off and it didn't blow off oh. it didn't you know <laughs> until they moved in uh well until yeah and then the ceiling of the basement cave you know fell onto the floor that kind of thing it's funny that you say that <laughs> i have a buddy who owns a big plumbing uh company in town and he moved to expansion for that reason because you can't yeah. accidentally dry fit it you have to expand it and fit and pop it in yeah so it's, that's why he likes this system. that's exactly why i moved to that about 15 years ago, worked with it for about 10, 12 years. Mm -hmm. And then there was some supply chain stuff. I ended up moving back to this, Mm -hmm. but you know, I'm not doing new construction anymore. I'm not doing the same amount of fittings that I used to. You still have to pay attention. You can still dry fit things. It's not the best uh, scenario. But so this is, uh, we're not done though with this. Okay. Okay. So you have to crimp it. But wait, there's more. (laughs) Yeah, but wait, there's more. So there's actually a tool. We don't have it with us today, but it's kind of along the same lines as marking the depth of the tubing for Uh your push to connect. There's a no-go go gauge. Oh, okay. So it slides over the outside of that copper ring. Got it. Okay. So if it doesn't slide on, you know, 
uh, nicely and it fits snugly, then we have to look at the calibration of the tool. Maybe the tool was bad. Maybe uh, we were, weren't were on there it square. Didn't, it didn't go all the way jammed tight. Yep. Uh, whereas, uh, you know, something needed calibrated, so it might not. That's interesting. There's a go, no go on that ring because that ring is moving. I don't know. A, Slide half a millimeter or whatever the whatever yeah the I mean you yeah so you've actually taken the the ring and you've changed its diameter got it okay so but again th this is the most popular fitting system by sales volume in the industry fascinating okay I got I've got one quick question for you this is kind of random but when I was buying some parts for this video at the home center I saw that there's a pro crimp ring <laughs> and a standard crimp ring I don't know if you can see that. And the only difference is the standard crimp ring looks like a wedding ring, as you called it, which I like that example. Yep. The pro version has a little plastic nub on there. What does this what does this plastic nub do? And why why is this a pro version? <laughs> well, it's interesting they call it a pro version. I thought it was a little more DIY. <laughs> but so uh, just to, in all fairness, I showed it once already. I'll put the, the ring uh -huh. on the end of the tubing and it can just kind of drop on there. Okay. Right. Okay. Got so it. We already saw in my my example that you can position the ring in kind of the wrong spot. Mm -hmm. You want that spacing. This little red sleeve, this pro version, that's a stop. Ah. And I actually like that. I like that. That makes sense. <laughs> I would use that if I was using this system. Probably cost more. It probably costs more. That's true. I didn't even yeah. look at the price on those packages, but uh, it's an extra buck or something. Yeah, who knows? Uh, you know, but... Actually, that's, in my opinion, a good feature. I'm not sure what happens to the plastic. It probably kind of spits off. Let's when put you, one on. Let's do we see. have another? Do we have an extra? Uh, oh, wow. Well, we have the uh, here. Here. There you go. There we go. Let's Where's our cutter it. here? We had a cutter up tube here. Cutter? Right here. Yeah, where do, cutter? Yeah. What right did here. we do with that? What did I do with the tube cutter? Here it is. Okay. So we'll just cut this one off, right? My really basic tube cutter. I'm embarrassed by my tools, Eric. I wouldn't be. They're, <laughs> they're effective. They work. What I, okay, what am I doing here? So I'm going to take this pro uh -huh. ring and I'm going to put it on the end of the red tubing. Okay. Then I'm going to take that fitting we used for the last example and I'm going to insert it. Okay. Same process, but I'm not having to hold that. That's kind of nice. probably a makes it thing. easier. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah. Let's see here if I can just do this all, all one by handed. myself. Man, I am not coordinated today. I mean, it's it's not easy, and honestly, it's not. I'm not used to. I'm I'm really not. Yeah, you're gonna have to hold it. Look, I'm hold the butt for you. Look, Eric's good at Upanor and Vega. I make a pretty good plumber's <laughs> assistant, to be honest. I always said I wanted to be a plumber if I wasn't gonna be a builder. Did it stay? Yeah. The little. Yeah. But the little red thing. Yeah, this, the red thing didn't move. Just the uh, copper did, and you're not gonna be able to see this on camera. But if you were, if you had the amazing eagle eyes that I have. There's a pinch point, it looks like, on here. Uh, there is. You can kind of see there. There is a, there is an action, and there's a difference. And then you got to really zoom in on the light. I can't imagine the camera's going to see that. Yeah, but. there's a little ridge where the two uh, sides of the tool meet. Yep. So that that ridge is indented on there, and you can see that. And now it's not going anywhere. So, also interesting to note that these are two different fitting systems, but the same fitting. Yeah, two different joining or right? joining jo systems. Yep. Pardon yep. me. Yeah, so the fitting is similar. Uh, there are some slight manufacturing differences from one brand to the next, but the idea is this: there's a very small barbs, many of them on the on the fitting itself, mm -hmm. and then the pressing action from the, the tool and either the stainless steel or the copper will seal against those very slight barbs. Let's say Got it. on the fitting. But yeah, one fit into the next, there's not a whole lot of difference, which brings us to the last joining system. Number five, what do we got? Number five. So this is uh, also very popular, probably rivaling in numbers the crimp, uh, crimp but we call this pinch, okay. okay? And so these are stainless steel clamps. And are there any brand names on these pinch that you know of? Yeah, so early on, I believe the manufacturer's name was Odeker. And, and that's right here on this package, they, which yeah. is interesting. And they're calling it a clamp, but there's that Odeker on there. So I wonder if, I wonder if that was maybe the uh, inventor or the patent holder or something? It could be. You know, I didn't do a lot of research on that. Mm -hmm. I think it's either the manufacturer or somebody who, who engineered the system, maybe the actual engineer. Yep. But it's an Odeker clamp or a pinch 
clamp and that uses the same type of fittings okay same insert into the um now it's interesting that there's also a pinch clamp and a pro pinch clamp from a different manufacturer too nope oh, i think we're back to that uh Maybe the pro maybe it allows it to Let's, stop on the tubing. Yeah, I'm gonna we're try, making guesses now. I'm gonna try that. We're gonna look at the pro. Okay. Okay, so there's the pro one. Yeah. So which, this actually has a little arrow, it's telling us which direction. Oh, interesting. Yeah. To insert it, so it'll stop and only oh, insert so far onto stop. the tubing. And just like the other one, this one doesn't have this. So this you'd have to be a little bit more uh, careful. Yeah, because it will go all, anywhere Wherever on the tubing. Want. And we want to have that, that about that eighth inch spacing or so yep. between the fitting and the clamp itself. Now this, I'll be honest with you, I was a little fumbly with this one. I'm probably more so with this one Kinda because, well, you have to, so this tool, uh, again. Here, let's do it so the camera can see you, if you can. If you see this small opening on the end. Yep. This tool fits onto that stainless steel clamp, and it takes quite a bit of force, to be honest with you. Oh gosh, yeah. That's and then one, once I get to the end of it, it, the tool will release, and you oh, see how it check pinched it out. that? Yeah, so you went from, here, let me show the original diameter to that. So it went from this to this, it pinched it quite a bit. It kind of feels like it's a zip tie almost, doesn't it? That great, ex yeah, like a zip, yeah, exactly. That's a pretty good ex explanation, I'd say. Um, What's happening is, is there's some, some hooks and slots on that stainless steel uh, pinch clamp and they're, that ho those hooks are holding on. Uh, and when you pinch that, there, it's, it's, it's uh, decreasing the diameter of the, the ring. The, Got it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and again, the pro model, the only difference is there's a little connection here, which when you slide it on, stops it from going down and it's holding onto the pipe right there. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. And again, it's kind of funny they call that a pro model, but that makes a lot of sense for somebody doing DIY to have that. But honestly, I'd, I would say that's, if you own a plumbing company, these would be a great one to have for it, your crew. It actually does make it look like, or does look like it's easier to install. Mm -hmm. For yeah. sure. I don't have a lot of experience with these. I've actually got more, probably more experience with, um, just various failures across all of these. Mm -hmm. And it seems that these, their, um, maybe their weak point is the clamp separating and then not now it's no longer yeah. holding pressure against yeah. the fitting. So when I was a production builder, uh, prior to starting my custom building company from 2000-ish to 2005, uh, we did about 150 homes a year and they were all pinch. Okay. Uh, and I have, only one example, and I was the warranty department manager for a while, I can only think of one time that we ever had a fitting failure. We had one house, one time, of the several hundred we built during that time that had one fitting failure. That, yeah. that seemed like it was plumber error uh, on the fitting install. A lot of times, that's what it comes down to, is the installation error. Uh, maybe tools were out of calibration. Look, people make mistakes too, right? Maybe they just go on notice for a good while yeah this is mechan this is like a mechanical clamp though just kind of how it's built yep you lose that whole the mechanics of it when you go to that copper ring yeah that's just a solid ring yep. right no yeah. hooks and barbs and things like that uh same with these stainless steel press uh rings yep right so our sleeves uh same situation and really these are doing all the same thing yeah they're just pressing on the outside of the tubing onto the barbs of the fitting. That's where that seal is, those little barbs on the yeah. fitting itself. Yeah. So let's wrap up the video, Eric, for plumber advice. Uh, it seems to me like you've had really good success with the press style, and in particular Vega, which has those pre-installed. Yep. Uh, you and I both have had good success with the expansion Absolutely. Uh, style. Uh, and it's interesting to note that a lot of manufacturers are coming out with PTC. I do see, I suspect in the not too distant future, uh, we're going to see more and more new homes with PTC in them. Uh, and part of that is because it's a toolless system. It's very quick and easy to learn. Uh, and we want more and more young people to come into our trade. Speaking of which, I mentioned earlier in the video, I got to spend a day 
with Eric as his apprentice. And that is a series called Talking Trades, uh, which by the time this airs, we'll have at least one or two of those episodes on YouTube. But on thebuildshow.com, you can see all three episodes with Eric and I and our pre-episode with Mike and Sherry Holmes talking about this great need that we have in the industry and the incredible opportunity, especially in the plumbing trade that Eric and I talked about. But later on in the series, we're gonna visit with some other tradesmen and women. So go out to thebuildshow.com, check that out. In the meantime, go follow Eric's Instagram, which is mechan at Mechanical Hub, and go check out his other videos on thebuildshow.com. Great summary today, brother. It was a really fun video. Thanks for having I me. I really enjoyed seeing these and thinking about these on my job site. In the end, all of these systems uh, are very reliable and very good systems. I've used uh, pretty much everything on a house that I built at some time in my past, uh, really without incident. I can think of only that one issue uh, with pinch years ago, but that honestly, I would still plumb a house with that today. It doesn't, that doesn't, uh, that one issue doesn't uh, foil me from thinking I would use that. On the other hand, there are a couple that I think are a little bit better in the long run. Uh, Eric and I have some other interesting stuff coming up, so stay tuned. In the meantime, follow us on TikTok or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on, on The Build, Build Show. Show.